It is 2 24 of 2015. We're going to take a look at Robert Jensen again. We're into the uh, second half of his book, which is the speculative doctrines. Uh, we've already looked at the petrology and Christology. And we're going to look at uh, the section I think he, that he really shines in, and that's his pneumatology. Uh, the doctrine of the spirit we covered earlier in the first half of the book. Uh, I found uh, was equally matched in uh, excellence in this uh, speculative doctrine of the pneumatology, which is more theological. And uh, it's very well thought out. It, again, he's combining Bart. you got to remember that uh, Jensen combines Bart and Hegel. That's pretty much his theological position. And he wants to uh, stay evangelical and still give uh, credence to the uh, Catholic faith. So uh, we're going to take a look at his pneumatology. It was uh, basically another short chapter. His uh, theological doctrines at the second half of the book are generally only about 10 pages, but they are extremely dense in logic, abstract, and very difficult to uh, discern and extract. Now it's uh, his... Theological pneumatology has three moments, uh, opening, declaring, and exploring. And those are unusual terms for a pneumatology, but opening, declaring, and exploring. And the way we have to understand Jensen's pneumatology is that the spirit is defined in relatedness. Spirit is defined in his relatedness to the Father and to the Son. Not in, a, in an isolated identity, but in a relational identity. So everything is relational. You'll see that when I give you the full titles of the sections. We'll look at the first moment. Opening is the spirit resting upon the Father as the opening of the Arche of Soteria. The opening of the Arche of Soteria, or the uh, originary moment of salvation history. Now, first of all, we are reminded uh, by Jensen that there is a communal usia space that created space that we discussed. And within this usia space, the spirit equals what the three persons of the Trinity are together. There's also a relatedness of temporal advent time. So the spirit also has a temporal relation uh, and this, un this is understood as his relation to the Father and the Son. And then three, there is the topic of soteria distributions. The created usia space within the God the Father accounts for two distributions according to Jensen. There is the usia logos, which we have been discussing as the word. But uh, under this pneumatology, we get into the category of energia. So we have the distributions outlined as Usia Logos and Usia Energia. And the Usu, Usia Energia equals the communal gifts, uh, which result from a type of a reification given to the energies of the spirit. Now, as far as the substance of actuality, the distributions of this created Usia space within God the Father create the substance of salvation. They create the substance of soteria, uh, articulated as the co-substantial fellowship between the Father and the Son. Jensen calls this the co-substantial fellowship between the Father and the Son that creates the substance of soteria, the substance, actual substantial salvation within temporal history. So resting upon, resting upon the Father for Jensen defines the action of the Spirit that liberates the Father from his self-enclosure and opens him to becoming the originary arche, the originary creative force, and the originary source of the uh, plan of salvation, the soteria. So the Spirit resting upon the Father liberates the Father from self-enclosure and uh, empowers the Father to go out of himself. 
in the uh, incarnate act. The second moment of declaring is the spirit resting upon the sun as the declaring of the possibilities of doxa glory. Now anytime you see the word in the New Testament doxa, doxa glory is always a sign designation. It's a sign, it's a doxa sign that points beyond itself. So a better translation, I think, is just referring to the the signs of the New Testament as the doxa signs. And that's the way I have articulated it here. This moment is the declaring of the possibilities of the doxa glory. First of all, this is a distribution of gifts. The gift of God himself to a recipient is to be understood as the gifts of the Spirit. These gifts mediate the possibilities of the doxa signs to us. Our apprehension of doxa signs is going to be through whatever particular spiritual gift we possess that has been uh, given to us through grace. That's our mediating realm of discernment. Force, the spirit resting upon the sun, is articulated as the proclamation, he is risen, which becomes for Jensen a living objective narrative on its own, a living objective narrative of the what he says constitutes the universal pressing force of God's eschatological future. It actually becomes a living objective narrative that uh, enacts the universal pressing force of God's eschatological future. Also under this moment is capacity. In this second moment, the spirit is understood as the capacity of Christ. This capacity solicits, we've got solicitude going on here, solicits a response from the subjective self uh, in that moment of unveiling the doxa signs. The doxa signs are unveiled. We discern these doxa signs through the gift or gifts that have been given to us. And then we are interrogated and uh, we are solicited by the Spirit to respond to those doxa signs that uh, implicate us. Now, gifts, force, and capacity are all enclosed within the mediating enclosure of agape love. The gifts, the force, and the capacity are all, incompl- all enclosed within the enclosure of the divine agape love. Together, these three make up the power of the Spirit. And it is articulated by Jensen as the pressing imminence of the kingdom. This power is felt as the pressing imminence of the kingdom of God. So, in conclusion, the resting upon the sun defines the action of the Spirit taking what belongs to the sun and declaring it out of the uh, usia energia, out of that uh, distributive area of the usia energia, as the Spirit's energies of participation. The second moment is described as the moment of the energies of participation of the Spirit. It takes us to the third moment. The third moment is going to be the exploring. And it, of course, is going to be the Spirit resting upon, resting upon temporal history as the exploring energies lifting finitude to the last time. So I'll say that again. The exploring energies lifting finitude to the last times. That's what it means for the Spirit to rest upon temporal history. There is an indwelling. God's love is uh, defined in our hearts as the indwelling of the Trinity. There is a lifting. The egyro energia, remember egyro means to uh, raise up. It's sometimes used for resurrection. But the egyro energia of the Spirit, the lifting energy of the works of the Spirit, gives the church its identity. Sonship, the metaphorical concept of child, best articulates the subjective self who is enlivened with divine life. We become a uh, member of sonship. It is a liveliness empowered by the persuasiveness of God's divine future. And then under this third moment is fulfillment, the trajectory of the opening of the Father and the declaring of the Son becomes the exploration that reaches a co-mutual fulfillment for both the created life of creation, but also a fulfillment for God himself, a fulfillment for the divine life. It's a co-mutual fulfillment. 
The trajectory, therefore, ushers temporal history into the last times. So you can see it's a, a very powerful presentation. I think uh, all of the theological doctrines in the second half of the book, in my opinion, are excellent. The uh, Petrology, the Christology, and now the Pneumatology, but I will have to say that I am a little bit 